Uh, welcome everyone, uh, welcome PCS members, welcome our friends to our today's uh, Wednesday IBS PCS seminar. Um, and it's a con not continuation, but a whole new seminar, but the topic, uh, the main topic is uh, our beloved uh, flat band physics. And it's a great pleasure to have with us today, uh, Professor Oleg Dershko. And I would like to invite uh, first our scientific host, Alexei, to introduce our speaker. Please, Alexei. Okay, yeah, thank you, Dylan. So our today's speaker is Alex Dershko um, uh, from Institute for Condensed Matter Physics at National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. And he will be talking about frustrated spin one half lattice models at three colorable uh, points in flat band physics. So let me briefly introduce uh, Professor um, Dershko. So he received his uh, PhD in 1988 at the Odessa State University, and in 2004 he uh, got uh, he became a doctor of physical and mathematical um, sciences at the Institute for Condensed Matter Physics, um, where he's currently working. Uh, so after receiving his PhD, he basically uh, moved uh, to the uh, his current workplace, where he uh, uh, gradually. Uh, became more and more senior researcher, and he's now, uh, since 2003, he's the head of the uh, Department of, for Quantum Statistics, uh, Model Spin Systems Theory, and Model Spin, um, yeah, Model Spin Systems Theory. And so his main research interests are strongly correlated electron systems, frustrated quantum spin systems, and low-dimensional quantum spin systems, and also density functional approach for the properties of new uniform uh, fluids. And uh, with this, uh, please, um, as we just called it, the screen is all yours. You're welcome to start. Uh, now, now we cannot hear you, Professor Dershko. Um, So, I'm not sure. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, now, now we can hear you. Okay, so uh, I would like to thank uh, for kind, to Alexei, uh, thank Alexei for a kind introduction. And I would like also to say that it's a great pleasure to give a talk. Uh, um, in the Institute for Basic uh, Sciences. And I do remember uh, my first visit to Korea. It was four years ago, and it was the first uh, conference on flat band physics. And it was a really very exciting meeting. And uh, I uh, took part in the second conference on flat band physics, which uh, uh, took place uh, in the same uh, place in August. Uh, and. Uh, Unfortunately, that time it was completely virtual, and I do hope that uh, I will have some another occasion in the future to come to Korea again, and uh, to, to, to in, in particular to your uh, nice institute. So today I will uh, speak about one particular paper which was done in collaboration with Jürgen Schnack, uh, Dima Dmitriev, Valery Krivnov, and Johannes Richter. Uh, the paper was published last year. I have a short talk about uh, this study during the conference in August, and now I uh, think that uh, it may be useful to discuss uh, this problem in some detail during this e e extended talk. And actually, I will speak about a quantum spin system on frustrated lattices at some special point in the parameter space. And this special point is interesting because some type of exact solutions are, are possible. And uh, this point is uh, related to um, well-known problems in mathematics, which are known as uh, colorable problems, uh, the problems of coloring. And uh, on the other hand, I will discuss the intimate connection of this system at this special point with flat band physics. So let me begin with some uh, preliminary remarks about colorings and about uh, quantum spin lattice systems. So coloring problems are well known in mathematics. Uh, and um, the problem uh, can be formulated as follows. So you have a, a 
set of some objects and you have to assign a color to a certain element of uh, this uh, set of objects, for example, to a uh, element of a map. And then you have to put certain restrictions on coloring. And um, it was known for more than 200 years that uh, four colors are uh, sufficient uh, to color any, uh, any map. But that was uh, an, a conjecture. And uh, to prove this uh, statement rigorously is a problem of topology. So in topology, you may continuously change the shape, the size of countries. Uh, on the map and look for the quantities and the properties which are unaffected by such continuous changes. So that is, in our case, the number of colors. So it's a typical topological problem. On the other hand, there are some other um, uh, problems related to colorings. Consider, for example, a certain uh, graph which consists of n vertices and uh, which is colored according to the coloring rules, for example, using K colors. And uh, the question which may arise is how many uh, colorings uh, are possible which obey the uh, coloring rules. So you have to count the number of such colorings. And uh, this uh, problem of counting is a typical problem of combinatorics. And of course, there are very simple problem in uh, topology and combinatorics concerning color and there are difficult problems. So here are some examples, a very simple problem uh, of um, coloring problem is topology is uh, formulated in the left uh, uh, hand side of my transparency. So it is easy to prove that every planar map of straight, which consists of straight lines is too colorable. And the proof is by construction, you have to draw the first uh, straight line and to color, for example, in black, uh, the half plane, one half plane. And then you have to draw the second uh, straight line. And then in one half plane, you have to change colors. So that will become now white and that will become black. And you will obtain the following picture. Then you draw the third line. And again, in one half, a half, half plane, you change the colors. And as a result, you obtain a two colorable uh, map which of course consists of straight lines and which of course obey these two coloring rules. But uh, the problem of coloring a, a real map, which uh, do not consist of straight line is much more complicated. And it was, the proof was, uh, uh, was found only in uh, 1976 uh, by uh, Apple and Haken. And uh, this proof is a, probably most famous example of non-classical proof in mathematics because it is computer assisted. They uh, distinguish uh, several, several hundred topological uh, different uh, situation. And then these uh, cases were analyzed by computers. Concerning uh, countings of coloring. So again, we have uh, simple problems and complicated and difficult problems. So the simple problem is uh, to find the number of ways uh, of coloring uh, the vertices of frustrated diamond chain, which consists of L sides by three colors. In this case, it is very easy to find uh, uh, the number of coloring. So you have to take one of three possible colors for this side, and then you have only two possibilities for coloring uh, those sides. This sides should be again red, and again, two possibilities to coloring uh, these two sides. And as a result, so the number of coloring is two to the power of number of cells, which is uh, the cell which consists of three sides. And as a result, the answer is very, very, very simple. On the other hand, if you are interested in coloring uh, of edges of the honeycomb lattice, uh, the problem uh, using only three colors, the problem is much more complicated and it was solved by Baxter in 1970 and Baxter found that the number of such color and scales, um, according to the following formula, W to the power of number of sides, if number of sides is large and W has been determined, it is given by this number. I would like to, I want to say that uh, colorings are well known in uh, classical uh, magnetism on frustrated lattices. Uh, here are two configurations which are known to be the ground state 
of the classical Heisenberg uh, model on a cargo mm, lattice. So that is so-called uh, Q equal to zero state, and that is so-called square root times square uh, square root of three times square root of three state. And uh, we know that this state uh, uh, compete uh, with each other depending on the value of uh, spin and the value of anisotropy. So in some cases, uh, the ground state is a Q equal to zero state. And in some cases, it's a square root times square root of three uh, state. And of course, in the case of spin one half, and even the case of spin one, in the case of isotropic Heisenberg interaction, uh, this magnetically ordered states uh, are not the ground state. So here we have spin liquid state, but for large spin values, so in classical limit, they are really uh, the ground state configuration. And the relation to coloring is obvious. So I even use uh, the same colors for uh, classical spin vectors as we, we obtained while coloring Kagome lattices, uh, Kagome, Kagome lattice. And uh, of course, there are many uh, such colorings and it is uh, more or less uh, typical for classical sp spin systems to have a huge degeneracy of the ground state in the case uh, when frustration are present. However, my talk will, uh, uh, will uh, concern a quantum uh, Heisenberg uh, lattice model. So I will consider spin one half XXZ, that is anisotropic Heisenberg lattice models, which is defined by the following Hamiltonian. And uh, spins are simply half of Pauli matrices and they are attached to the size of some lattice. And uh, here are some explanations which are uh, familiar to, uh, to everyone. And uh, I would like to say that uh, I will discuss some special uh, relation between uh, exchange interaction and special lattices, of course. The lattices will be constructed from triangles. So the lattices with triangular motifs. But special relations uh, will be as follows. So I will consider X, X, Z uh, Hamiltonian in the case when delta equals minus one half. And it is also interesting to note that some related papers, some very recent papers considered also X, Y, Z Hamiltonian with such a relation between exchange uh, couplings between X, Y, and Z components. And I wish to know that uh, this very recent uh, studies uh, somehow um, uh, missed uh, the previous big mathematics, which was elaborated uh, 50 years ago or 20 years ago uh, in the context of chains. Uh, there are some results obtained by Baxter for spin one half X, Y, Z chain with such a relation between exchange couplings, as well as for the spin one half X, X, Z chains with this special value of exchange correlation by Stroganov uh, 20 years ago. However, they do not mention uh, colorings and the results refer to spin quantum spin chains, but not uh, uh, lattices in any dimensions constructed from triangles. So as I have told already, the highly frustrated classical spin system usually have highly degenerate graph state manifold. And in contrast, when we consider um, quantum Hamiltonians, when Hamiltonians contain some entities which do not commute, usually this degeneracy is lifted and uh, uh, quantum counterparts typically have a unique uh, non-degenerate ground state. And uh, probably the most uh, famous counterexample of this uh, letter statement is the case of highly frustrated quantum spin systems with flat magnum band. They also have highly degenerate ground state manifolds. So uh, flat band system uh, provides a case of the system with huge degeneracy of the ground state. It may occur in such system. And flat band system is rather popular topic nowadays. And there are several groups in the world who are doing uh, studies in this, uh, in this field. Uh, uh, and in particular, uh, well known is the group of Sergei Flach, and there are several review paper written uh, uh, on this topic. And of course, uh, we know, all know the paper uh, by uh, Leica, Mandrianov and Flach, which was published three years ago on flat band systems. And there were even several conference completely, conferences completely devoted to the flat band system. The first one probably was in Dresden 
uh, eight years ago, and then th there were two conferences in the John. So the audience is familiar with flat band system physics, but I still I wish to 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 remind you some basic things because, as a matter of fact, my talk will be uh, a discussion of uh, free colorable uh, systems from the point of view of flat band systems. So uh, I have a brief uh, uh, discussion of the dispersive, uh, the uh, quantum uh, spin systems with the dispersive magnum band. The simplest example probably is a spin one half anti-ferromagnetic Heisenberg chain. So in this case, uh, <coughs> uh, you know that uh, ferromagnetic state is obviously the eigenstate of this Hamiltonian. And in the one magnum subspace, when one spin is flipped, you can easily find uh, one magnon state. And uh, here is the explicit expression for one magnon state, and here is their energy. And if we consider the uh, uh, energy diagram uh, separating uh, energy states with respect to the value of SZ, we will see the following picture. So uh, for antiferromagnetic uh, interaction, this fully polarized state is, uh, has a very high energy. And uh, the states uh, with one spin flipped uh, are shown here, and here you can see this one magnon state. So they are <coughs> not important for thermodynamics in the case of zero magnetic field. But in the case of strong magnetic field around the saturation, you have to subtract uh, uh, Zeeman term from each energy level, depending on the subspace, on the value of a Z uh, of the subspace to which they belong. And the picture will look at as follows. So in the ground, uh, in the uh, magnetic field around the saturation, uh, fully polarized state become among the ground states. And of course, the states, uh, one magnon states become also important, but uh, not only uh, one magnon states are important. These two magnon states and three magnon states, which cannot be found explicitly, are also important for thermodynamics. And the picture remains rather complicated to find thermodynamic properties uh, of the system in a strong antiferromagnetic chain in a strong magnetic field. The picture, uh, the situation become completely different in the case when you have dispersionless one magnon band. So here is an example of a system <coughs> with dispersionless or flat one magnon band. For this, uh, as an example, I consider spin one half antiferromagnetic sawtooth chain. And in this case, uh, you have the following Hamiltonian. You have two interactions along the straight line and along the zigzag path. And of course, ferromagnetic state is again the ground state of the model. But in one magnon subspace, now you have two subbands, two one magnon subbands. And here is the energy of this one, one magnon subbands. And in the case of special relation between J2 and J1, more precisely, when J2 equals two times J1, uh, one of this band the, with the lowest energy become dispersionless. The dependence on K disappears and <coughs> yeah, the energy is as follows. Another band, of course, is dispersive, another subband. So and again, this uh, energy levels can be um, depicted as follows. So here by red segment, I show the ground state uh, which uh, uh, belong to the flat or dispersionless uh, band. And it is very important that you can construct such states also in the subspaces with two magnons, <laughs> three magnons, and even more magnons. And in this case, uh, in the presence of magnetic field, the picture become uh, as follows. And there, there is a possibility to construct low temperature thermodynamics. Let me explain briefly how we can construct many magnon states in the case of flat one magnum uh, band. Uh, it is very important that the flat band states are located in a small part of a lattice, which we will call a trap. Uh, flat band states can be written, for example, for the, for, for the sort of chain at hand in the following form. So they, uh, that is the result of acting of spin, uh, uh, lowering operators on a fully polarized state. And you see that uh, uh, this state uh, is located on only three adjacent sides uh, of the lattice. And of course, with some special uh, 
coefficients uh, at this size. Here you have minus two, and here you have plus one, and here you have plus one. And you can also consider some auxiliary lattice uh, on which uh, you show only the traps. And uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, this localized magnum, which this is typical flat band state, is located in, in such a on such a uh, side of this auxiliary lattice. But if you have more magnums, you can put them on the lattice, uh, so, uh, uh, taking care about their overlap. They should not overlap. And if they are sufficiently far from each other, this state obviously will be, uh, for example, three magnum state, uh, which belong to the subspace of three spin flipped. And uh, mm, there are many such states. To find the number of these states, you have simply to find the number of special configuration of hard dimmers, because uh, the special uh, distribution of the state obey hard dimmer rules, so they cannot touch each other. And as a result, you are able to find uh, the degeneracy of, uh, of states, of ground states in the subspace with one spin flipped, with two spin flipped, and etc. And here are such degeneracies in the case of periodic boundary conditions and such degeneracies in the case of uh, open boundary conditions. And we know the uh, ground state energy in these subspaces there given by this simple formula. And now I return back to the um, picture which was already shown. So we are able to determine the energies and the degeneracy of the stain shown by a red segment. And in the case of a magnetic field, which is around the saturation or precisely equal to the saturation value. You will have <coughs> the following picture. So that is the energies minus H saturation multiplied by SZ. And you see that the ground state is huge, has huge degeneracy and this degeneracy can be calculated. So it is related to classical hard dimmer problem in classical physics, which is, is known. And as a result, you can calculate the contribution of the flat band states. And this contribution dominates low temperature thermodynamics around uh, the saturation. And for that, you have to take into account only the degeneracy of the state and multiplied by the exponent <coughs> to the power where you have the energy of this state. And we exploited this kind of reasoning uh, many years ago and to use uh, this type of thinking to calculate the properties of several uh, quantum Heisenberg antiferromagnet, including the Kagome and the checkerboard Heisenberg antiferromagnet. So let me summarize briefly uh, uh, my introduction or introduction. So I discussed only very briefly coloring problems in mathematics and spin lattice theory. And what is more important, I have introduced the spin one half X at Z lattice model. And I also discussed uh, the case uh, of models with flat or dispersionless one magnum band. They have a highly degenerate ground state manifold and uh, the degeneracy can be determined. And as a result, low temperature thermodynamics of such system can be uh, calculated. So, and now let me pass to the main meal, to the main dish of my talk. So I will discuss uh, the free colorable lattice, which were uh, noticed by Chanlani with co-authors in 2018. Uh, I will consider a, a typical representative of this free colorable uh, systems, uh, which is sufficiently simple to be reconsidered from another perspective, from the flat band physics perspective. And I will show how to calculate the ground state degeneracy for this free colorable model. And I will uh, obtain magnetothermodynamics uh, of such system in a weak field. This result goes beyond the consideration of Chanlani because they were not able to find degeneracies in a separate subspaces uh, with definite SZ. And I will end up with conclusions. I will present the results uh, obtained both by analytical arguments and by numerics. So let me start with the Chanlani paper, uh, which appeared uh, three years ago. And uh, Chanlani considered a Kagome, uh, spin one half Kagome XXZ uh, model. And um, they noticed that there is a special point uh, in the parameter space, which correspond to delta equals minus one half. 
when uh, the ground state uh, of the model is highly degenerate and can be calculated uh, exactly. Uh, the importance of these points uh, can be seen from this figure. So here you see uh, uh, the space, parameter space, in which along x axis I put uh, an isotropy, and here is the parameter delta equals minus half. And of course, most interesting case, delta equal one is somewhere here. And uh, along uh, y axis, I put the second neighboring interaction, se second neighbor interactions in the, on the cargo lattice. And of course, we are interested in the case when second neighbor interaction equals zero. So that is the case of famous cargo lattice and the point at which anisotropy equals one. So, but the point which has been uh, established uh, or noticed by Chenlani with courses is somewhere here, but they proved that around uh, this point, all phases which are present in the whole phase diagram match. So it is necessary to consider only a small perturbation around this uh, special point in order to see what possible phases may occur uh, in spin one half uh, cargo me, uh, high, uh, model, including the most interesting isotropic point. So you can see here two types of spin liquids and you see here Q equal to zero state and uh, the state square root of three times square root of three and also ferromagnetic state. That are all possible states uh, which may appear for such a Kagome uh, system. And uh, all possible phases appear already in the vicinity of this special point. Then these ideas were developed by several, uh, several groups, uh, by Shanlani uh, again, and also by Ova Benton. And there are even more papers which concerns uh, non-equilibrium properties uh, around such a special point in a parameter space. But um, uh, of course, for us, uh, the, the main uh, we were interested in this paper because uh, of huge degeneracy of the ground state. So at this special point, the ground state degeneracy grows exponentially with system size. And our question uh, was uh, naturally to to clarify whether this huge exponential degeneracy has any relation to the flat bed, flat bed physics, because we know that in flat bed physics, uh, flat bed systems, we can have such degeneracy. And in order to start this intimate relation between free colorable point and flat bed physics, we consider a simple representative of a free colorable lattice. That is uh, one dimensional, spin one half x x z zero so tooth chain lattice. The lattice is shown here and you have here again j1 and j2 and that is two type of interaction on the straight line and along the zigzag path and in order to have this free colorable lattice you have to say that j1 equals to j2 and uh, you here is the Hamiltonian of Chanlani so tooth chain so it can be written as a sum over cells, each cell contain two sides, one and two, or as a sum over triangles. And here you can see explicit expressions for the Hamiltonian of triangles, which will be very important for our consideration. And of course, here is this anisotropic or XXZ Heisenberg interaction. And we set the energy units, uh, uh, fix the energy unit set in J1 equals J2 equals one and delta one and delta two equals minus one half. Of course, as Z computes with the Hamiltonian and we can use uh, total as Z as a quantum number to classify the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. And we immediately calculate uh, one magnum spectrum and we immediately observe that it has two branches and one of these branches is flat, no dispersion. And the higher energy branch is, of course, dispersionless. And we immediately can construct the flat band states. In this case, they are given by the following expression. So you have to act on the vacuum state, which is fully polarized states in this case, by this operator, which is given by the following formula, and you obtain flat band states. So uh, it was clear for us from our previous experience that now we have to construct many uh, magnum states uh, acting by such operators with this uh, indices uh, uh, which are sufficiently far from each other to, 
to respect uh, had dimmer rule and we will obtain uh, all ground states of the model which is defined here. But uh, we were astonished because uh, our calculations, uh, numerical calculations show that there are much more ground states. So not only the hard dimmer states, so those states which are obtained uh, respecting hard dimmer rule uh, are a ground state. There are some other <coughs> states which also belong to the ground state manifold. And our question was how to characterize the ground states and how to count their numbers. And uh, for that, we have to take another standpoint. So we have to consider the properties of single triangle and then to construct a lattice which consists of such triangles. And that is a, a, a secret of, in, in such a way we, we, we reveal the uh, secret why we have more eigenstates, not only those who are uh, obeying hard dimmer rules, but there are some other states which do not obey hard dimmer rules. And, they can be uh, derived from a consideration of the properties of a single triangle. So consider, for example, a simple tr triangle uh, with sides with sides one, uh, two, three, and that is a Hamiltonian of these triangles uh, uh, after adopting the units which were shown uh, on the previous transparency. So we have here x, y part, and you have with different sign, sign minus z, z part. And you can easily calculate the eigenstates and eigenvalues uh, for this Hamiltonian, and they are shown here. So the ground state manifold has the energy minus three over eight, and it is six-fold degenerate. So you have fully polarized state and fully polarized in the opposite direction state, and they both belong to the ground state manifold. And you have also two times degenerate uh, ground state which is given eigenstate, which is given by the following formula, and here uh, omega is given by by this formula. So it is, and you have also two excited states, and the energy is nine over eight, and that is uh, this, this energy level is explain how uh, coloring representation appear uh, in, in my conversation. So let us introduce a, a red state, which is on each side we have we may introduce red blue and green state according to the formula of following formula so the red state is a linear combination of spin up and spin down the blue state is a linear combination of spin up and spin down but the spin down is taken uh, with the following coefficient omega is defined here or, or there and green state is uh, defined by the following uh, linear combination of spin up and spin down but here you have you, are, you have omega squared. And now if you consider uh, the coloring of triangle and the corresponding wave function, which is write down explicitly, you have to multiply this uh, three states and after expanding the brackets, you obtain the following results. And you see that, that, that this resulting expression is precisely the states which belong to the ground state manifold. You have here a fully polarized state, and that is another fully polarized state. And uh, the states in which one spin is flipped down appears in a linear combination, which is precisely uh, the one which belong to the uh, ground state manifold. That means that if I act on this state by the Hamiltonian, I will take minus three over eight times the same uh, state. I can color this triangle in another fashion, and here is uh, a coloring, uh, and here is uh, explicit expression for this wave function. If I substitute instead of R, J, and B, their explicit expression, and I obtain again minus three divided by eight times this uh, state. So uh, let me make a short side comment. So it is clear now uh, why Chanlani was able to calculate the degeneracy of spin one half x x z Kagome model with delta equals minus one half. If delta equals minus half and one half, we, sometimes the people call this model x x z zero Hamiltonian. So we know that Kagome is consisted of uh, 
uh, triangles, and therefore the Hamiltonian of Kagame lattice can be written in the following way. So you have to sum over Hamiltonian of triangles. But we know that each triangle uh, has uh, the lowest uh, energy if uh, it is colored with three colors. So um, if you color the lattices uh, obeying uh, coloring rules, and write corresponding wave function, it, it, it is clear that the, the Hamiltonian will see only, each, each Hamiltonian of triangle will see only uh, its uh, uh, coloring or corresponding eigenstate, and the eigenstate belong to the ground state manifold. And therefore, the results of acting of this Hamiltonian will give you minus three over eight times number of triangles. However, there are many colorings which will give you the same result. And to find the problem, of ground state degeneracy is equivalent uh, to the problem of counting the number of free colorings of uh, um, vertices of the Kagome lattice. But this problem is, on the other hand, equivalent to the coloring of edges of honeycomb lattice. So you have to uh, draw uh, a segment uh, which cross these vertices, and it will be an edge of uh, Kagome, of uh, honeycomb lattice. And uh, this edges, the coloring of edges, of course, satisfy the, hot, uh, the uh, coloring rules and uh, the degeneracy or the number of colorings uh, was found by Baxter 50 years ago. And therefore we can borrow this result from 1970 to establish the degeneracy of gray state manifold of spin one half X, X, Z, zero Kagome system. And that is the result for the degeneracy of ground state manifold. So, but let me return to the main uh, line of my talk. So uh, I want to reconsider now uh, flat band state calculation using uh, the properties of triangle. So I, I prefer to work with the uh, slightly different uh, linear combinations which belong to ground state manifold. So here I have uh, two spin two states with fully polarized, which are fully polarized, but here I consider another linear combinations which I denoted by uh, state number two and state number three and state number five and state number six. And they, they are simply a linear combination uh, with the state with this complex coefficients which were shown in the previous transparency. And now I can uh, uh, check that the uh, localized magnum states, which is located uh, in the second trap, so, uh, here, you, 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 you see, for example, the, the second trap, uh, and the state is located here. Two, three, and four are sides with spin flip down. So here, two, three, and four are sides with spin flip down. And all other states are fully polarized states. That is, localized states, we know this from flat band, from uh, band calculations. But you can check that this state is an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian from another perspective. So if you act by Hamiltonian on this state, you have to act by a sum of Hamiltonians uh, for each triangle. And if you act by this Hamiltonian on this state, you will see only the ground state of this Hamiltonian. And the result will be minus three over eight. Uh, that is the ground state energy multiplied by, by, same, by, by the same state. I have uh, some additional uh, calculation shown here. So that, that is a state which is located, for example, here. It is written down explicitly. And that is Hamiltonian of the chain. So Hamiltonian of the triangle one, two, three, Hamiltonian of triangle three, four, five, Hamiltonian of triangle five, six, seven, and so on. And if you act by Hamiltonian one, two, three on this state, which is located on the trap number three, you will see only fully polarized state. Of course, you will obtain minus three over eight times this fully polarized state, because this is an eigenstate which belongs to the ground state manifold. If you act by Hamiltonian three, four, five, you will see uh, the uh, states which are colored in blue. And uh, taking a closer look, you immediately realize that what you see is a linear combination of states two and three from the ground state manifold. Of course, the result will be minus three uh, divided by eight times the same state. And that is an eigenstate. If you add the Hamiltonian, which uh, refers to the sites five, six, seven, 
you will see the uh, states uh, with uh, five, six, seven indexes. This is five, six, seven. They are colored in violet. And again, what you obtain is, um, what you see is the states which belong to the ground state manifold. And therefore, here is the result. So I can uh, reproduce the result of band calculation using the properties of triangles. But <clears throat> in what follows, it, it is easier as the first step to consider the open boundary condition. And in case of open boundary conditions, you have two more uh, states which are localized <coughs> on a boundaries. And therefore, in total, the number of uh, states in the subspace with one spin flipped down is given by this formula. Here, C, uh, M large, M capital, M, M small are simply the binomial coefficient. So we are able to calculate, uh, reproduce the ground state uh, degeneracy in the uh, subspace with spin one flipped. And that is the result for open boundary conditions. So band theory use periodic boundary condition, but okay. So uh, we have to pass uh, to the subspaces with two spin flipped. And in this case, uh, we, of course, can consider these two independent localized magnets. They are obviously the ground state. Uh, this can be, this is evident. But uh, since there are more states in this subspace, and they can be, they can be pictorially represented uh, by hot dimmers, which are put on the trap number two. So the trap number three cannot be uh, occupied according to hot dimmers rules, which localized states obey. But there are more states and we constructed them explicitly. That is a construction which can be easily, which can be coined uh, two magnon complex. So you see that uh, pictorially it is represented here or there. And in this case, uh, for example, consider this to look localized magnon complex. It is located on, on trap two. So we have here a localized state which is located in trap two, but it is embedded in a surrounding, uh, which is shown here by uh, this, uh, uh, or, uh, this uh, pink color. And you can uh, write down explicitly uh, these eigenstates. For that, you have simply to, Mm -hmm. uh, substitute uh, the values, uh, the expression for uh, L2 and for all these uh, uh, guys in, in these brackets. And uh, if you um, uh, expand brackets and perform uh, uh, simplification, you will obtain some expression uh, which acting on this fully polarized state will give you again only a linear combination of a graph from the ground state manifold for each triangle. And acting by the Hamiltonian, which consists of the Hamiltonian of uh, all triangles, on this state, you will see only eigenstates which belong to the ground state of uh, ground state manifold for each triangle. And therefore you obtain the result minus three divided by eight times number of triangles. And again, this state. So that is an eigenstate, completely new eigenstate. It is, two magnon complex, which is by inspection, an eigenstate from the ground state manifold in the subspace with two spin flip. And we can easily calculate the number of these states and obtain for the number of degeneracy in the ground state manifold with two spin flip, the following formula. So far, so good. We may pass to the case with three spin flips. What are the ground state manifold in the subspaces when SZ equals uh, fully polarized state minus three? Uh, of course, in this case, we have three independent localized magnets as a ground state, but they are not the only ground state in this subspace manifold, uh, in this ground state uh, manifold. So we have also localized magnon plus localized magnon two magnon complex, which are sufficiently far from each other. These are obviously also a ground state uh, in this subspace. Again, by inspection, one can convince himself, uh, oneself. And there are even more states. And these states are uh, <coughs> so-called free magnon complexes. And <coughs> they, there are two types of free magnon complexes. 
one uh, type is written down here, it can be coined uh, one bracket, uh, free magnon complex, because we have only one bracket that is this environment in which uh, the states uh, located in trap uh, number two and number four uh, uh, are embedded. And here you can see uh, the pictorial representation for this uh, two magnons, uh, three magnon uh, localized complex of such type. So here is uh, magnon localized at state two, magnon localized at state four, and they are uh, embedded in such an environment. And that is a pictorial representation uh, for this formula. For this formula, again, expanding these brackets, you can, you after all, will find that uh, the resulting wave function consists only of uh, eigenstates from the ground state manifold for each triangle, or they are linear combinations. And therefore, the result of acting of this Hamiltonian gives you again the states multiplied by the ground state energy and, of course, by number of uh, terms or, or number of triangles. And there are also uh, another type of free magnon complexes that is localized magnon, which is embedded in more complicated environment, which consists of two brackets. And pictorially, uh, this is represented here. So uh, that is a localized magnon, which is embedded in two brackets type environment. And explicitly, uh, it is given here. And again, uh, opening, expanding the brackets, you will find uh, the uh, result a result uh, uh, which is an eigenstate of the, each Hamiltonian with the ground state energy for each triangle. So um, again, it is easy to calculate the ground state degeneracy and we see that the ground state degeneracy is given by this uh, very, very simple formula. Um, so here is the culmination of my of our study. So we were able to extend this construction and of ground states and calculation their number for any uh, value of spin flipped down. So for subspaces with S Z equal n divided by two that correspond to fully polarized uh, value of S Z minus k and k varies. Uh, in this region, we find the ground state degeneracy and it is given by the following formula. And we check that these are really, uh, we have constructed a, really a complete set of uh, ground states. At least we, 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 we cannot, we do not have mathematical proof for that, but we check this, uh, we have numerical evidence for that. So we consider chains which consist up to 39 sites and we calculate uh, this number and we see that the ground state in all subspaces are precisely determined by this formula. It can be easily proved that the constructed states are linearly independent ground state. So let me show you in this energy level picture what we have obtained. So um, the, our result is shown in the right hand side of this transparency. So we were able to calculate the ground state in the subspaces with SZ equal n divided by two, n divided by two minus one, and up to subspace with SZ equal one over two, spin one half, because we're considering uh, open chain and that is the smallest value of the spin uh, which is uh, possible in our system. So that can be contrasted with the picture shown in the right, in the left hand side of this transparency. That was the flat band and many magnum flat band state, many particle flat band states in the case of a chain, uh, isotropic chain uh, with another values of exchange <coughs> coupling which uh, support flat band, one magnum flat band. <coughs> and you see this state. Uh, these states uh, become the ground state in a strong magnetic field, and these states are ground state in a zero magnetic field. Uh, now we can, of course, calculate uh, well, that is, this result um, paves uh, the way to uh, examining thermodynamics. And uh, I begin this study 
of thermodynamics uh, with calculating the total degeneracy. The total degeneracy, which can be obtained using uh, free colorable representation, in our case, is uh, a result of summation of uh, uh, degeneracy over, over all subspaces. And here is the result. And here, after simple mathematical manipulation, you obtain the following result. I, I uh, omit calculations and explanations for periodic chains. But everything can be done for periodic chains too. And uh, the result of for the total degeneracy is uh, given by this formula. Of course, it is slightly different, but in large, uh, in thermodynamical limit, both, uh, both the results scales identically. So in large, uh, for large n, they scale uh, like follows. Of course, this results coincide with a simple counting using free coloring picture, because in this simple counting, you have to. You have again the following results, and uh, the, it coincide with our uh, more precise consideration. Of course, boundary conditions are uh, irrelevant in thermodynamical limit. And okay, so ah, here I have one uh, side comment which was inspired by uh, Sergei's question during the conference in August. Sergei asked about the macroscopic set of integral of motion whether uh, we can uh, we can uh, find some integral of motion in, in our case and of course we can so um, the operators which create uh, localized states for example in trap number uh, j commutes with the hamiltonian that that is evident if we are acting um, either by h times l or l times h on the on the ground state, we obtained, of course, the same result. And that means that in the subs in the ground state subspace, uh, this operators compute. So that is an integral of motion. But also, the Hamiltonian compute with a two independent localized magnum uh, operator. And uh, that means that uh, uh, such a commutator equals zero. And this uh, product is an integral of motion. And of course, it computes with the operator which create uh, um, two magnum localized complex. And of course, it commutes with operator which creates free magnum localized complex of two bracket type. And as a result, the number of this integral of motion which commute with Hamiltonian in the ground state manifold is really huge. It scales exponentially with system size. So uh, let me return to main line of my talk. So now we are in position to calculate the ground state uh, uh, contribution to thermodynamics. This contribution is important in the case of low temperatures in, and in the case when H slightly deviates from zero. So in this case, uh, there will be splitting of this ground state manifold because ZM and TAM will be different for different uh, subspaces. Uh, uh, with uh, certain SZ and this uh, Zeeman contribution is here. So that is a spin value in the subspace, uh, certain subspace multiplied by H. And of course you have uh, an opposite value of SZ. Therefore you have here two exponent. And what is important for this calculation is the ground state degeneracy in the subspace with this uh, number of spin flipped down and we know this quantity and therefore we can calculate this contribution to the partition function coming from a low line energy level and here is the result and knowing the partition function we can straightforwardly calculate Helmholtz free energy magnetization susceptibility specific heat or entropy and um, easy, one can easily elaborate such a formula and what is interesting here that uh, you can uh, observe that this thermodynamics is universal. Universal in the sense that it depends on, not on temperature and on magnetic field separately, but only on their ratio. X, it should be written somewhere. Okay, X is H divided by T. So thermodynamic quantities depends on X and this universal regime is just the contribution coming from uh, localized state. And uh, here I compare the result uh, of analytical prediction and um, numerical calculation. We consider a chain consisting of 19 sites and uh, by 
symbols I show the results of numerics at, at low temperature. And the numerics coincide uh, with the analytical results. And if you consider slightly higher temperature, you can see deviation, but there are some values uh, of magnetic field at which again, this universal regime emerges. So um, uh, more, more, more light uh, is shedded on this uh, results in the next transparency where I show uh, uh, the ground state degeneracy in subspaces with different value of SZ and also the gap to the next excited state. And uh, that is uh, uh, our model at hand. So you see that it consists uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of 20 sites. I consider here periodic boundary conditions. And that is a degeneracy of the ground state. It equals 10, that is okay. And that is a gap to next excited state that is in one magnon subspace and that is gap to next dispersive subband. And in the subspaces with two spin down, where not only localized magnons are important, but also two magnon complex are important. That is the ground state degeneracy, it is 45. And that is a gap to next excited state. It can be determined only numerically. And it is 0 0.2. And then if you have free spin down, the degeneracy become even larger. It is uh, 121, and in the case of four spin downs, it is 220, and that is a precisely the same number which gives our analytical formula, and that is the gap. And since you see that the lowest gap is 0 0.003, it is not uh, astonishing that the results for temperature 0 0.01 completely coincide numerics with analytical results because the temperature is below the gap for this case, and here. It is temperature already three times larger than the gap. And therefore you can see some deviation here. The temperature is uh, even more larger, 15 times larger than, than the gap because gap is about 0 0.3. And um, okay, the total number of states is 400, uh, uh, four, uh, four, 4,445. And this number also obtained from our analytical formula. So I have started already to complement my analytical study by numerical calculations because this column can be obtained uh, analytically, but that these results already for gaps are related to some suggestion, some proposal for excited states, and that is beyond our consideration. We we, we do not have any good idea for that. But we, we see that this state's ground state is separated by a gap. And here you can see uh, more information about uh, uh, energy levels. So you see here this model. Okay, I will consider uh, three models because uh, free sort of chain uh, Heisenberg model has flat band uh, one magnon, uh, uh, flat one magnon band. So uh, flat uh, one magnon band, uh, is supported for this set of parameters that is what we are considering that is Chanlani case or the case uh, of free colorable model, but it, it is also um, supported by such a set of parameters that was uh, the case of isotropic XY chain. And when you have special relation between uh, interaction along the straight line and along a zigzag path, along a zigzag path should be two times larger. And it appears that flat band okay also in the case when the interaction along zigzag path is ferromagnetic. This model was considered uh, in 2014. And all three sort of chain uh, models uh, are flat band systems. And uh, here you see some results for comparison with the model number two. So the degeneracy, of course, <coughs> are, are different and the gaps are different. So it, it is a different model. And here you see, <laughs> the density of states uh, for all three models. And uh, uh, the model which we are considering uh, is shown by blue curves and the model uh, uh, which we call model two is shown by uh, violet curve and uh, the model isotropic model is shown by red curve and it, show, it shows but physics at saturation field. And uh, you see a completely different structure of uh, uh, energy spectrum for all three models. Well, for the model one and two, the structure is similar to some extent. It is completely different from model three. 
And you see some peculiarities. You see a quasi gap in this energy spectrum, which occurs uh, for the chosen values of energy, uh, for chosen values of coupling at uh, energy 0 0.5. And after that, you have high energy excitation. So that, that can be called low energy excitation. And as a result, you can calculate thermodynamics uh, at zero magnetic field. So taking into account this uh, low energy spectrum. And here you see also results for free models, uh, which are considered and compared here. So that is the case of isotropic model, no uh, low temperature structure for the specific heat uh, profile. And that is the case uh, of uh, Chanlani case. You see that uh, you have some low temperature structure in the specific heat profile. And that is the case of model two, which is different. And taking into account in only the low energy excitations, we can reproduce this part of curve and it is shown here. So in, a, in another scale, we show uh, this low energy part, uh, which is calculated for specific heat versus temperature, which is calculated taking into account only low line excitation. So I think I, I may come to my conclusions. So in my talk, I considered uh, the spin a representative case of free colorable uh, XXZ uh, lattice on a uh, heading triangular motif. That is one dimensional sort of chain. It has anti-ferro and, and ferro magnetic uh, coupling, and uh, it observes interesting properties at zero magnetic field. And probably the most exciting uh, finding is uh, that there are more localized states than uh, we usually think uh, to find in such a system. We usually think that in such a system, we can find all the independent localized magnons as a many magnon uh, ground states. But in, in this case, we found also localized and magnon complexes. To some extent, this is a bad news because uh, having only hot uh, dimmer states, we were able to use a powerful method of classical uh, statistical mechanics to calculate the properties of a uh, frustrated quantum system. And now we have to consider the hot core object of different shapes, not only dimmers, but uh, they uh, trimmers and this larger, larger object having larger extension should be considered too. And moreover, it is not clear how to take into account their degeneracy. That, that means that this lattice gas description, which was used in our old studies, uh, doesn't work in the case of uh, Chanlani or this free colorable uh, lattices. Okay, we observe some universal behavior uh, in thermodynamic properties, which depends only on the ratio, like for ideal paramagnet. And we also observe that is already the result of numerics. We do not have a good analytical arguments for that. A quasi gap in the energy spectrum and uh, this ground state manifold dominates low temperature thermodynamics at zero magnetic field and uh, uh, some ideas about low line excitation, some suggestion for wave function for this low line excitation uh, are in demand. And uh, again, I have some, uh, some uh, issues which were inspired by my talk in August. So um, I think that this uh, calculation of ground state degeneracies uh, can be extended for other one dimensional lattice with triangular motifs. For example, for frustrated ladder or you could call it cross cross ladder. Uh, of course, this uh, way of thinking can be uh, applied, I guess, to the um, more complicated Hamiltonian, which was considered by Overbenton, that is X, Y, Z Hamiltonian with a special restriction on uh, exchange coupling between X, Y, and Z components, uh, at least on one dimensional lattice, cis with triangular motif. I, I guess we can we can uh, elaborate a similar calculation for this case too. And uh, uh, as I told you in August, we have some results for cargo lattice in two dimensions. Uh, and unfortunately, our, our uh, 
paper is still in preparation, but uh, uh, Dima Dmitriev and Valera Krivnov uh, published uh, this year, a few months ago, a, a paper on two-dimensional lattice for slightly different Hamiltonian. Uh, and that is, uh, that means that, that they were interested in the generations and they were able to calculate some something in two dimensions. Uh, there were a question about uh, relation to the coordinate beta results. I still do not know uh, what is the relation uh, to this uh, coordinate beta results construction. Disorder in interaction transport properties, I can hardly add uh, something new in comparison to what uh, mm, I told in August. But I think also that it may be interesting to use uh, mm, uh, to use this correspondence for between uh, coloring and uh, ground state degeneracy uh, and ground states is for quantum uh, speed models for solving some problem in combinatorics. For example, <clears throat> if we are interested in calculating the number of ways of coloring the vertices of pyrochlor lattice having four colors, uh, we know that uh, this uh, number of ways of coloring is precisely the ground state degeneracy of a certain quantum spin model on the pyrochlor lattice. And the Hamiltonian of this model was given in the first uh, Chanlani papers in PRL. You do not have, you, you must have also some type of four, four site interactions in, in this Hamiltonian. And then the ground state will be precisely four colorable ground state on pyrochlor lattice. And imagine we are able to find the ground state degeneracy using our uh, methods uh, from quantum uh, many body theory. And in this case, we can give, for example, at least numerical. So in this case, we can give some hints for mathematicians uh, concerning the number, how the, the number of coloring scales with the size of pyrochlor lattice, if the pyrochlor lattice is colored by four colors. So I think I can stop here. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Dershko, for this very interesting uh, seminar on how these different concepts of coloring and uh, kind of exact uh, ground state solutions uh, come together and intertwine with flat band. I, I found it really exciting. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we have time for uh, questions. So perhaps uh, let me start. Uh, in, in the beginning, you were showing a phase diagram and you said that this exactly solvable point, uh, I believe it was, it was the work that you were referring to from uh, Changan, Changlani or... Yes. or um, and you said that if you go uh, just close to this point, uh, you can find uh, all the different phases. Yes. So, do you do you think that then some sort of perturbation theory would work in that case, or or? Yes, or... yes, that was their idea, but they didn't realize that. So that, that is that was their suggestion. So let us consider this special point, and then you have to study. Um, a small perturbation around this point, and you will see all phases and properties of all phases will be available using some perturbation arguments. But as far as I know, they didn't realize this idea. That was a proposal. Probably they are working on this point. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I never see such calculations. And we also think about such phase diagram for Sotil's chain. And uh, okay, so whether the, the, the topology of this phase diagram is similar. So you have all phases around this point. So it is not clear whether it is true for every system. So that, that was, this, this picture was uh, established by Chanlani and co-authors by calculation. And it is not clear whether such uh, a picture will occur for other systems. And so in this in this work of yours on on uh, Kagome, um, did you consider this? Uh... No, we in our works of Kagome we have calculated only degeneracies and of course low temperature thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. So, but 
the results are not so impressive in two-dimensional case. We were able to, we have some numerics and we have some uh, analytical calculations which reproduce numerics. But we do not have such a general formula as in one-dimensional case. Mm -hmm. We have some um, pictorial representations for this uh, loc many magnum localized states in two dimensions. That is true, but counting their number is much more complicated problem in two dimension. Mm -hmm. And but and this the generacy here uh, this was uh, you said it's the result that uh, Baxter already obtained yes yes they they noticed that this degeneracy is precisely what Baxter obtained 50, 50 years ago so that was their observation mm -hmm. this model model can be mapped on to exactly solvable by Baxter coloring mm -hmm. problem okay thank you uh, we have a question from Alexei. Yeah, I mean, um, I would like to continue. Um, so I'm wondering, um, so doing a perturbation around this point should be really difficult because you would need to, to, to do a highly degenerate perturbation theory. So that's maybe the reason why we were not able to do it, isn't it? Okay, so that is a challenge. And we were also thinking about this uh, perturbation theory consideration, but of course you have to consider different, uh, probably at first you have, must have some hints from numerics, what phases are expected, and then you can, you should prove this analytically using this degenerate perturbation theory to obtain some analytical. Yeah, but can you, uh, well, do you think this, the perturbations will typically couple all the um, different sectors or the um okay uh, but for example in this case you have a ferromagnetic ground state mm -hmm. so probably ferromagnetic ground state can be reproduced within this perturbation treatment In, mm -hmm. in, in this region, you have this Q equals zero state, square root of three times square root of three state. Here, of course, you have quantum spin liquid, so it is not clear how, what, what should be the outcome of perturbation theory calculations for spin liquid theory. But still, I think that is an interesting problem to think about. Probably Kagome is too complicated for us. Probably we have to do this at first for one dimensional case which is simpler. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and then another question. So um, what kind of generalizations you can um, construct? So uh, what kind of models uh, are expected to have similar phenomenology? So my understanding is that triangular based, like lattices based on uh, triangles would all share this phenomenology. So you can construct similar models, but what about other uh, types of lattices. Okay, so probably you know that uh, people uh, considered the cases of two coloring lattice and four coloring lattices. So four coloring lattices is the lattices constructed with tetrahedra. And pyrochlor is a simplest example of such a lattice. But in this case, the Hamiltonian is rather complicated, which admits this uh, four colorable uh, mm. Point. So it contains not only an isotropy with special value, but it contains also some extra four side terms within each uh, uh, tetrahedron. So, uh -huh. true, but then um, one could argue that the same logics would apply as in this um, triangular models. Doing perturbation around would reveal phases that probably. Uh, cover the more realistic cases. Yes, but I think that uh, this phase diagram is not a general statement. So I do not think that uh, this uh, colorable point uh, in the vicinity of colorable point for any system, you will obtain all phases from a whole phase diagram. I'm not sure. That is true for the Kagome system, but uh, we have to check this whether such phase diagram is uh, valid for 
in other cases. So it is not a priori clear whether uh, this three colorable or four colorable point will be of so importance for other systems. For Kagome, that is true. And that for was proved by Shen Lani. Oh. oh, so that was proven. Okay, it is numerical proof. You see here uh, what they obtained. I don't know. I think that it is okay. For me, it is okay. So they obtained numerically all phases which appear in the phase diagram, and they already appear around this uh, special point. So I think that they have proved this. But uh, okay. concerning other systems, I think that you have to check this. Not clear from the very beginning. Yeah, but I guess it wasn't clear uh, for the carbomalasis as well before the, the, the calculation. Thanks. Okay, do we have any other questions from the audience? It seems not, so uh, let us thank Professor Dershko again. Thank you very much. And uh, with this, uh, we conclude our